Okay, everybody knows that hand tracking lacks button. That's the whole point of it, which means that it is sometimes hard to trigger a particular input from your player. So, a solution to this problem is the hand pose detection. And lucky for us, Unity has updated their XRN package with this new feature. So, in this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create a new pose and be able to recognize it with the Unity XR toolkit. Oh, and by the way, if you are searching for a tutorial doing the same stuff, but using the Meta XR SDK or coding it from scratch, I have both of these subject cover in a video. Anyway, if you also like to get access to the source code of all of my project and exclusive content, you can support my work on Patreon, it will mean the world to me. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Unity and to get started on our gesture recognition system, I've already done the setup for the XRN with the Unity XR toolkit. If you don't know how to do this, you can watch this video that I've previously made on this channel. But anyway, now let's get started. And the first thing that I want to make sure is that we have the correct package version of both the hands and of the Unity XR toolkit. So for this, let's go to Windows, Package Manager. And now we can see that if I go to In Project of there we can see that i have xr interaction toolkit 2.5 version so if you want to make this work make sure that you have this version or anything above installed now anyway the next thing that i'm going to look at is the xr ends over there but as you can see the version of xr ends that i have is the 1.3 version which does not feature yet the gesture recognition so if you have anything lower than 1.4 make sure to update to the latest one which you can do by going to plus add package by name and type com.unity.xr.ends. And if you click on add, this should automatically install the latest version available of the Unity XRN. But one last thing to notice is that the last version is currently in pre-release. So this means that it cannot be fetched here and that we need to add the version here as a text. So let's write 1.4.0. 3.1 there you go like this make sure to not make any typo and let's click on add okay there we go so at this point we have xr interaction toolkit above 2.5 and we have the xr ends above 1.4 which is everything that we need now for the xrn make sure if you have just updated it like me to update as well the end visualizer and we can add now the gesture sample package if we click on import there we go now everything is imported in this project to work with end gesture so let's close the package manager and let's get started with the gesture recognition on this scene and by the way, if you want to have a look at a sample using the gesture recognition, you can go to sample XRNs, the version that you have, then go to gesture. And if you double click on the end gesture scene over there, let's click on import TMP essentials. You can have a look at here this great scene, which is using end tracking and which will show you how end gesture is working. But in my case, I want to kind of do this from scratch and add end gesture on a custom scene. So let's go back to the scene that we were before. And now let's add end gesture here. So the first thing that we need is to right click, create empty. And I'm going to call this end gesture detection. There you go. We can reset here the transform. Beautiful. And I'm going to create two empty game objects. One is the right end. And I'm going then to duplicate with control D and call this one left end. And this is under this right end that we can add some gesture. So let's right click, create an empty. And for example, a gesture that we can recognize is the right hand thumbs up, for example. And now we need to click on add component and add as a component the static end gesture. There you go. And this is the main component that will be responsible to fire some event when a certain gesture is performed. Okay, so as you can see, the first thing it needs it is an end tracking event. We can add one by going to the right end, add component and add end tracking event. There, as you can see, you can select the endedness of the hand, so right for this one. And this is where we will be able to fire some event when the joint of the hand are updated or the pose is updated. 
Now let's simply go to the left end and add again an XR tracking events, but set the endedness from right to left. Beautiful. Now let's go back to the right hand thumbs up and drag the hand tracking event over there. So the next thing we need is an end shape or pose. And good thing is that with the sample package that we've downloaded, if we go to samples, XR ends, the version that we have, gesture, examples, you can see in the two folder and pose and end shape some pre-made and gesture data that can be used to be recognized. So for example, for the right hand thumbs up, let's simply drag the thumbs up over there in the end shape or pose. Now for the target transform, we can leave it like this. And basically, we now have everything ready to have the thumbs up recognize. Now, if you want to make this work for the left hand as well, it is very simple. Let's simply select the right hand thumbs up, du duplicate it with Ctrl D, rename it left hand thumbs up. We can now drag it to make things a bit more organized under the left hand. And now instead of the right hand tracking event, let's drag the left hand tracking event over there. And there you go, it is beautiful. Already with this, we will be able to detect if the user is doing the right hand or left hand thumbs up. And by the way, now you can add any pose or shape that you want. So for example, let's do this as well for the, uh, maybe the fist bump. So I'm going to duplicate it, call it right fist bump, drag here the fist bump for the right hand shape or pose, duplicate the right fist bump and rename it left fist bump, drag it under the left end, and as before, set the end tracking event to be the left one. And there you go, beautiful. As you can see, it is very simple to add more gesture to be recognized. So let's simply test how everything works by displaying something on the text. So I'm going to right click on the hierarchy, go to 3D objects and go to text text mesh pro. Beautiful. Here we can see a big text that we can put in front of the player. Maybe let's scale it down a little bit. I'm going to place it over there and make sure that the alignment is at the center. You can also set the position on X to zero to make sure it is in front of the player. Beautiful. And maybe let's press on T to open the rec tool. Let's drag one side and also press on Alt to change the two sides in mirror and reduce here the font size to something like yeah, 20 will be fine. And with this, we will have enough room to display some text over there, even if the text is a bit long. Now let's call the game object and gesture pose text, beautiful. Now let's simply change this text value depending on the pose that was detected. So for example, for the right hand thumb up, as you can see, the events that we need are over there. So with these two events, we can basically trigger anything that we want when the gesture is performed or when the gesture has ended. So in my case, I will simply click on plus, drag the end gesture pose, go to text mesh pro, and there we should see somewhere in this long thing, the text right there, and we can write, write and thumbs up, beautiful. Now let's simply right click on the event, copy it, go to the uh, right fist bump, paste the event, but instead I'm going to change the text to right fist bump. And now you can of course do the same for the left hand gesture performed. Okay, perfect. So everything should be ready. Now let's see if the end gesture is actually working. And for this, only one way to find out and it is to click on play. Okay, so as you can see, end tracking is working. But now let's see if the gesture recognition works. So I'm going to do a thumbs up. And as you can see, it works. Right hand thumbs up is detected. Now a fifth bump. And there you go. As you can see, it works pretty well. And by the way, it also works on the left hand. So let's do left hand thumbs up. So everything is now working. But one question remain, how can we create our own gesture to be recognized? And this is what I'm going to show you right now. Okay, so if we go to the samples, XRNs, gesture, 
examples, we can see that there are basically two types of end gesture. We have the end pose and the end shape. Now, basically, a uh, end shape, if we go, for example, and have a look at the fist end shape, the fist end shape is some restriction that can happen on the finger bones and that we can define over there. But if we go to the end pose, as you can see, so the end pose extends the end shape by adding some constraint on the orientation as well. So let me show you. If we go to Asset, we can right click, go to Create, and then go to XR and Interaction. And here we can create a new end shape. I'm going to call this one Rabbit. Beautiful. And as the name suggests, my goal here is to create a rabbit hand. So as the name suggests, the goal here is to create a rabbit hand. So hi, a rabbit hand is of course doing this gesture. So let me go back inside the tutorial. And to do so, we can have a look at the finger shape condition. And our goal will be to extend only the index and the middle finger. So if we click on plus, here for the thumb, I'm going to click on plus. We have the first element. And as you can see, you can basically choose five conditions on each finger. The full curl, the full base tip curl, the pinch and the spread. So the curl is basically the curvature of the old finger. The base curl will only look at the bending of the base of the finger. And the tip curl, as you guess, will only check the bending of the tip of the finger. Next, the pinch will tell you how far from the thumb the finger is. And the spread will specify the angle between adjacent fingers, as you can see. So, in the case of our rabbit hand, what we need is check the full curl to maybe something like 1, which will tell you that the thumb is closed. As you can see, you can set a tolerance. For example, I will set mine to 0.5. And now we can basically do the same for the other. So, I'm going here instead of thumb, do this for the ring and do it one last time, not for the ring, but for the little. So this will make sure that all of these three fingers are almost fully bent. And now we can create the rabbit gesture by clicking on plus and set the index desire curl to be zero. And maybe for the tolerance of this one, I'm going to set it to 0 0.7. Beautiful. We can click on plus again. And instead of the index, we want the same stuff, but for the middle finger. And here you go. With this, you have a complete end shape that is created using all of the constraint. And as you can see, it is really easy. And with these, all of these settings, you can kind of create any behavior that you want for the hand. Now, if you want to learn more about how to use all of these behavior, I strongly advise you to have a look at the documentation right there that you will find in the description of this video, but also to go in the uh, gesture that you can find on the example folder over there, and you will be able to find how they created their own gesture right here and to learn from them. Now let's see how we can detect this rabbit hand. So I'm going to go under the right hand. I'm going to duplicate the right fist bump, and instead I'm going to write right rabbit, okay? And now instead of here the fist bump, we can simply drag the rabbits, and in for the text, we can simply do right rabbit. There you go. Now let's click on play to find out how this works. Okay, now let's find out if this works. So as before, we can still do the right hand and the right fist bump, but let's do the rabbit. And as you can see, it works. We can now, when the rabbit hand gesture is performed, that's awesome. But right now, as you can see, the right rabbit always worked, even when the hand is pointing down. And of course, we can change this by creating not a end shape, but a end pose. So let me show you. If we right click, go to create, then go to XR and interaction and select end pose. Let's call this one piece sign. And as you can see, we can drag a end shape over there. So we can basically drag the rabbit shape. But the cool part is that we can extend the hand shape behavior by adding some user and target condition over there. Now, what are these conditions? Let me show you. If we go to user condition, click on plus. As you can see, we can check a certain end axis, say the alignment condition. For example, I align it perpendicular or opposite to something. 
and select a reference direction. So origin up, end to head, nose direction, chin, ear direction, and here set a certain tolerance. So for example, we can set that the palm direction is align with the origin up and set an angle tolerance of 45 degrees. This means that the peace sign will be the rabbit and shape, but that will add as a condition that the palm is facing up. Now, in the same way as for the end shape, you can learn more about the different type of end orientation that you can set from the documentation. As you can see, you can basically choose either if you are going with the finger, thumb or palm direction and that you want to align it to the origin, the hand-to-head -head vector, the chin, the ear or the nose direction or the hand-to target. And with this, you can create any behavior and make sure, that, for example, that your end gesture is facing a particular direction that you want to. Now, anyway, let me show you how this works by simply uh, duplicating the right rabbit and call this one the right piece sign. Beautiful. Let's simply write here, write piece sign on the text and drag the piece sign data over there. Oh, and just a little advice. The here, the angle tolerance was a bit uh, too low for the end gesture to recognize correctly. So I've just set it uh, up to 90 instead of 45. And now let's see if this works by clicking on play. Okay, so as you can see, the right hand thumbs up works. The right fist bump works. And if I extend my index and middle finger, the right rabbit works. But now let's put the rabbit up. And as you can see, the right piece sign is now showing. So that's awesome. And now, as you can see, we are now able to create our own end gesture and to recognize it. That's awesome. But you've probably noticed that it is sometimes hard to know which settings you need to put inside all of these conditions based on a certain end gesture that you want to recognize. But the Unity Star Toolkit has added a nice tool to help you do this. So if we go to samples, XRNs, gesture, debug tools, prefab, as you can see, there is here the left and right and shape debug UI, which is very, very cool and that we can drag in our hierarchy. Now, as you can see, this is a bunch of a user interface that I'm going to place in front of the player like this. So what's very important with this left and right end shape debug UI is that for each finger, it can say the current value of the curl and pinch and spread that it is at right now. So with it, you can basically do a certain gesture, try to see the settings that it has currently and apply it to create your own gesture. But right now, if we click on play, as you can see, it does not work because this game object is not properly set. So I hope that's something that they will fix later on. But if you want to make it work with the current version, you need to go to the end gesture sample scene that has as well as you can see this left and right end shape debug UI. And you need to click on overwrite, apply all. Beautiful. This will apply all of the settings that are currently on uh, this game object, which you can see over there and that are missing on the prefab. So now let's go on the scene that we had earlier and click on save. There you go. And now if we click on play, as you can see, it is now working. Everything is properly set. And as you can see, all of the data are updating based on a certain gesture that I'm doing. So let me show you. For example, if we do our right key sign, we can see that our thumbs is fully curled but not our index and middle finger as well. And this is how you can easily know all of the condition that you need to apply when you do a certain gesture. And there you go, that is all that you need to know to detect and gesture with the new update of the Unity XR and Tracking Tool. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, please leave a like down below in the video. You can as always get access to the source code and exclusive content on my Patreon, link in the description down below. A big shout out to all of the new Patreon who joined recently and that will be displayed on your screen. Thank you for watching and see you very soon, bye bye.